our digital supermarket. Um, we have a special sale today. Um, we have some eggs. If any of you are hungry and haven't had breakfast, personalized eggs. And if you don't like my presentation, you can throw eggs at me. That's fine. Uh, a little bit more seriously, it is good to be here. I think this is a, a beautiful booth, quite frankly. I just walked in an hour and a half ago. I want to congratulate the, the team that's put this in place. I think it reflects something that we're trying to convey, which is the seriousness that HP is taking the packaging industry, but also the uh, presence that we already have in this market, which I think is not well understood yet by the brands, by even some of our customers. These are very early for days for us in the broader packaging industry. We've been well established in labels for quite a few years and are making our initial steps into other areas of folding cartons and flexible packaging. But uh, rest assured that just like 10 years ago, we started out very modestly with a few innovators in the label industry. And today we're the number one vendor period in the label world. Um, we have similar intentions in flexible packaging and in folding cartons. These are early days, but you will see uh, from the booth around you, but also hopefully from some of my presentation, that things are changing relatively uh, rapidly, and um, hopefully Interpax in the future, Drupas in the future, the packaging part of our business will continue to be uh, a very, very important growth area for us and for our customers. Uh, a little bit like uh, our booth today, we obviously have our presses here and some solutions from our partners such as Digicon and Kama, um, but the focus is on the end product. It is not necessarily on the speeds and the finishing and the workflow and how we produce the product. It's more on the need for the product, what's driving the change in the industry. And what I'd like to do is really walk you through three areas. The first of all is the general market trend, what's happening in the 21st century and marketing in general, what the brands are looking for. This obviously impacts packaging and the trends in packaging. And then specifically, what does this mean for digital trade? What does this mean for our business as vendors in this area? So let's start out a little bit with the market trends uh, in general. And as you know, Benny Landa in uh, 1993 said that everything that can become digital will become digital. Printing is no exception. Packaging is no exception. But in today's world, Fundamentally, as we all know, things are digital, things are moving extremely fast at, at uh, internet uh, speed. And this has an implication not only on the end product, but I would say also on how content is created and how fast content is, content is created and changed. So SMSs, gaming, entertainment, it's all on demand, especially with the younger generations. The time that a product really is new and innovative is extremely short. You cannot design and produce and fulfill and package anymore for very long runs or for very long periods. Everything is short in terms of the production, but also in terms of the speed to market. And another key trend, obviously, is around the environment. The awareness there is increasing due to the boom in population, the boom in wealth. Uh, I just came back from two weeks in China, and it's unbelievable to, be, unbelievable to see the growth there. But on, others, on the other hand, you see the impact of the environment, which is deadly. Uh, there's growing awareness everywhere, including China, that somehow we have to balance the growth with the attention to the environment. So every brand you talk to, and every commercial printer we talk to, the environment today is very, very top of mind uh, for everyone. At the end of the day, given all these changes in the world, the challenge for marketing hasn't changed. The brand wants to be different, distinctive, and also very, very relevant. And that means you have to take into account how you influence the consumer, which includes the physical nature of the product and the packaging, also the capability to be relevant in terms of content, either customization or ultimately personalization, but also you have to be able to react very, very quickly. Uh, it makes very little sense to have an internet campaign that can go online in a short period of time and change quickly if you can't fulfill the products or if you can't change some of your marketing given the feedback that you get from the internet on a daily basis. And 
end of the day, what, what we found is that the most successful brands are those that can combine the virtual with the physical. Obviously, you need a great product. Obviously, you need to package it in an exciting way. But you also want to be able to take elements from this virtual world, get, your, get the feedback from the consumer into your design, and ultimately enable the consumer to really take full control and design their own product and uh, get it in the specific package that is relevant for this uh, specific uh, consumer. And to sum this all up, at the end of the day, to really be successful today, you want an integrated customer experience. We see it very much in our commercial printing world. The cross-media, web-to-print experience has really taken off over the, first, uh, over the last few years. Five years ago, certainly ten years ago, web-to-print was really a, a niche concept. Today it's mainstream. You'll hardly find a commercial printer that doesn't have a pretty sophisticated web-to-print capability. The leading brands will combine printing as a part of a much broader marketing play, which includes personalized websites and SMSs, and today access to the iPad and to the iPod and all the smart uh, phones. We believe that similar things will happen with a different twist in packaging uh, as well. So let's talk a little bit about packaging. Uh, many of us has grown, have grown up with this first moment of truth that has come from Procter & Gamble. The minute that the consumer walks into the supermarket like this and makes the choice to a large extent based on the physical product. This is certainly true for beverages, for wines, but it's true for pretty much any product and the brands spend a lot of money optimizing the packaging, the design, the colors in order to ensure that the customer at the end of the day reaches out, takes out the product and puts it into the shopping uh, cart. But today again the world is changing and before the moment of truth the world is swamped with online ads, with blogs, tweets, Facebook, virtual storefronts and people that are looking for their virtual product. And brands are aware of this and they cannot ignore it. And with all the beauty of the physical product in the supermarket, at the end of the day, it's part of something much broader. And the question is, how is the world reacting to this and how can digital printing support some of these uh, needs? Uh, clearly today, and many of you have seen this, when you buy a physical product, it's relatively easy to take your smartphone, to swap it right next to the product and to access a personalized, not a, to access a website which gives you information but can also ultimately collect information. This is really happening. This is an example from Miller uh, Beer in the United States, printed on the Indigo with these uh, uh, codes that the uh, company uh, enables you to go in and access the website with the relevant uh, information. This is happening for beer, it's happening in packaging in general, in Japan for example, where there is a very uh, strong localization for us, so people want to know who they buy the products from, and you can access today through a smartphone and see who is the farmer, what are the qualities of the vegetables or even the meat that you, uh, that you bought. Indigo has been around for quite a few years. Our, our focus and our heritage has really been around commercial printing, but today a sizable part of our uh, customers are doing packaging applications. Uh, we have to date 5,600 presses installed in over 100 countries around the globe, 3,700 customers, and, and as we grow, we're seeing more consolidation in the industry, more customers buying their second and third and fourth press. Uh, and of this 5,600, about 1,400 are doing labels and packaging. Most of them, quite frankly, are still doing labels. Some of them are adding to their label capabilities, folding cart and flexible packaging applications. And over the last year, for the first time, we've seen people from the packaging industry, flexible packaging or folding cartons, buy dedicated Indigos for their mainstream uh, applications. So all in all, it's, it's a growing industry. Within the digital label space, as I said before, we're the number one vendor, and we estimate that 76% uh, of the presses sold uh, in the digital market are Indigo. But more importantly, we're larger vendors than any of the analog uh, guys. We're very much spread around the, the world, no big difference. The exception being that in Latin America, 
we have actually a much stronger presence than our commercial. Latin America is a, a, a very, very good uh, area for us, especially in the wine country. Chile, Argentina, very big wine producing uh, areas, and a lot of the Malbecs and other wines that some of you will see here on the package, are, uh, the labels are produced. Uh, on the Indigo, beyond that, it's, uh, it's relatively uh, balanced. Now, how can digital printing enable a packaging experience? Um, in quite a few ways, and, and let me just start out with saying that, again, at the end of the day, we're very successful in labels. And people print on labels today relatively long runs, but of course not the millions and millions, but certainly tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of, uh, of labels. And at the end of the day, this is done because of the market demand, because of the demand of the brand or because of the demand of the end consumer. Uh, and we've been successful with labels because we have a very good technical solution, both on the printing side and over the years we've developed the workflow with ESCO and the finishing with AB Graphics and others. But the need is identical for the other packaging applications because at the end of the day it's the same brand that designs a product that goes on the shelf with a label, but also in, in, many, uh, in many times also with a folding card or a flexible package. Until now, we focused on labels and also our end-to-end -end solutions for the flexible package and folding cartons has been limited, but all these needs here of customization and personalization and speed to market is not unique to labels. It's unique to any packaging application. And that's why we have a firm belief that just like labels started becoming mainstream, and, and today about 10% of the value of labels printed are printed on digital presses, mostly indigo, over time, the same thing will happen to flexible packaging and folding cartons once the end to end solution is there. And I will say again, these are relatively early days. I cannot stand here and say we have the ultimate solution, but we will build it together with our uh, customers. You already see around the world um, mainstream brands producing significant quantities of products with digital. Uh, I know we started out with proofing and test marketing and uh, people still think that Indigo's drive short runs, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, Indigo presses today produce hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of labels. They're not necessarily all identical, uh, but that's exactly what uh, the world wants. The world does not want a million identical labels. The world, the world wants to take one product and it could be that inside the product is an identical product or it could be their small nuances and through the packaging to differentiate. Now, I love this example it's L'Oreal, which is clearly one of the best brands in the world. This is done in the United States. These are printed on multiple 6,000s, so the run lengths are, are immense. Very, very long run length. Uh, same substrate, but different designs utilizing uh, color capabilities. You'll have one press set up with uh, seven colors and they can be orange and green and the other will be orange and violet utilizing really the productivity and obviously the end uh, uh, brand is thrilled with this and it enables relatively fast changes so if you see that you're more successful in one character rather than the other you don't have to produce weeks in advance and hold the inventory you order the first run and you see which stores take more product and then you enable that I've also seen beautiful samples uh, of a similar product where, the, where it's ultimately personalized with, uh, uh, with the logo of your sports team. So if you're a fan of this soccer club or this baseball club or this uh, uh, basketball club, you can personalize it. And this is very relevant during events, not just as a one-off, but as you go into the finals of the NBA or the World Cup and you see which team advances, you can produce more of the specific quantity. These things are really starting, starting to happen. Another example, which seems very, very uh, trivial, um, is Hobby Lobby candles, a pretty standard product. At the end of the day, people go and see many candles on the shelf. You have to decide what to buy. Obviously, the label uh, influences the packaging around this. And the number here of the change using digital does not seem that dramatic. It's only 3% growth in revenue. But for a uh, relatively trivial change in the label itself, without touching the product, and doing that at a pretty reasonable cost, because it doesn't cost more to change the label on digital than produce it, a 3% increase in revenue for Hobby Lobby was uh, very, very uh, significant.
I think you're all aware of the Heineken uh, personalization of the beer cans, which is, uh, exists in the Netherlands, has been rolled out to Ireland and Spain, and now rolls out to additional countries. Unfortunately, not all countries legally allow you to do these kind of things, because in some countries, beer is something that you cannot just print the label, you have to get a lot of authorizations. But the concept of personalizing your own beverage exists. It's not only Heineken, it's, it's Sprite, it's Coca-Cola. More and more brands are doing it. And this, quite frankly, is a marketing play. We will never produce millions of uh, bottles of beer on Heineken. It makes no sense. It's a very small business for Heineken. But if any of you have seen some of their advertising, uh, in certain cases, they're trying to promote themselves as innovating, close to the customers, uh, personal, and this is an ultimate proof point that we're not just treating everybody uh, exactly uh, the same. Another great example is tissues, which you would say is probably you know, one of the uh, strongest commodities in the world. How do you differentiate tissue? A tissue is a tissue. But at the end of the day, if you have a uh, tissue with a picture of your baby on it, uh, it probably means something emotionally to you and you're willing to pay a little bit more. You can go today onto a Kimberly Clark website, download a picture of your child and create your own tissue boxes. Again, very high value for the producer of this, the label converter or packaging converter that does it, and very strong emotional attachment to the brand, which is exactly what the brands are looking for these days. Uh, another product which doesn't seem to be very much geared for personalization. Wrigley gum sold in tens of millions or not in billions. Uh, and look at the way they position it on the website. Gums for all occasions, birthday, business, holiday, Thanksgiving, bar mitzvah, sweet 16. You can go on the website today and create all these personalized uh, gums, which uh, again, I think are great for the consumer and create a lot of loyalty. And obviously this is part of a much more sophisticated marketing campaign because if you're a good customer, you get free vouchers, you try it once, you like it, you come back. It turns the brands into something beyond the commodity that is just competing on uh, pricing versus a lot of other uh, brands. So the range of applications you, you can produce today digitally is broad. Uh, obviously, labels is our sweet spot. You'll be surprised how many tubes are produced uh, digitally. Tags is a huge application for us, and just recently uh, we, we announced formally that Avery Denison, that's also a big supplier to the label industry, but has a, a, a big uh, division that's also producing tags, is using dozens of indigos around the world in order to produce the tags. The tags means when you go into a store, to the Gap, or anywhere else, you have today a standard set of colors that define the size and some other elements and it's, you know, it's attached to the shirt. Uh, this can be produced digitally, first of all because the runs are very, very short, and secondly because they need perfect quality. Um, so this is done partially on offset and partially on, uh, on indigo. Another example of, of the uh, seven color uh, capability and the high offset quality is, uh, is this, uh, which uh, I think is produced in Korea. And these are tests, urine tests in this case, and the results determine certain things which are very important. But so you really need to be in a situation that the colors that at the end of the day are, are created chemically match the colors here outside. And this is where it's printed on the indigo, and I would say very few technologies can hit this consistently with this color matching. So these are the things we're trying to bring to market. We, we do not want to just the long run commodity printing. We want to see where do we add value using our technology uh, advantages. Obviously, there are no minimum quantities. Obviously, we have a very large range of, uh, uh, of uh, media that you can print on. This is an example of olive oil. It's important, important for grease, and the label itself is actually wood. So again, somebody wanted to do that because it differentiates themselves and makes this look a little wood different than the other olive oils that are out there uh, on the shelf. And last minute, last uh, and certainly not least, legislation is very important, especially in the packaging industry, and it varies by country, and sometimes it varies within the country, and it has to do with the whole interaction of the substrates and the inks, and certainly for food, and a lot of what you'll see here is obviously food, 
So this is an important element of the strategy and over time more and more uh, uh, options will be available for our uh, customers. At the end of the day, ultimately what we're trying to do is to enable the brands to differentiate and to innovate. Um, ultimately, let them think of almost anything and be able to print it with an Indigo uh, device. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the products. You can see them and many of you are very familiar. The heart today of, of the uh, system is the HP Indigo WS6000. We've sold already over 200 of these presses uh, over uh, less than two years. They're doing extremely well. Print volume is wrapping up very nicely. We have them in 40 different countries. Uh, the vast majority of the customers are still label converters, but many of the label converters are already doing not only shrink sleeves, but moving into tubes, folding cartons, flexible packaging, and we do have dedicated presses that are doing only, only flexible packaging, only folded cartons. Some of the solutions we have include the AD Graphics converting line, the Kama sheet fit finishing, combinations of AD Graphics and Kama, and clearly everything is driven by the ESCO workflow, which is a standard not only for labels, but for the other packaging applications, and the requirements around colors and matching and Pantone are pretty much identical. So this is really leveraging the knowledge that, uh, that we already have. So we, we basically are, are here this week trying to create awareness um, with the brands, with some of our existing customers, together with the brands, and with people that until now have been focusing their efforts on packaging, to some extent because they see commercial printing going down and packaging is still growing, but with very little awareness of digital. And again, as I said before, these are early days not that we have yet the ultimate solution, but customers that are savvy and buy the whole end-to-end -end solution and are early in the market are certainly going to be making a lot of money short-term with a digital solution and folding cards and flexible packaging and will be building a much larger business over time as additional solutions and capabilities uh, come to market. Hopefully this will enable for all of us in the industry revenue growth which is profitable with margins significantly higher than what we have today within a world that's looking more and more at the environment. Clearly digital brings value of less waste um, and uh, that's an important one. And ultimately building and maintaining the brand is what is more and more critical in today's world from the marketing point of view and we hope that we can add some, uh, some value there. So we, we at Drupa, 1995 have shown technologies that at that time seemed a bit uh, niche and uh, maybe ahead of their times. The base for any new industry is disruptive technology, but over time it has to become mainstream, which we have in labels, and we believe that over time we will for flexible and cartons as well. So thank you very much. I hope you got some uh, overview of what we're trying to do. Uh, you're welcome to look around, touch the products, uh, look at the quality, the versatility, obviously see the machines themselves. But at this point of time, if there are any uh, questions, myself and my colleagues here, Stan is here, Stein is here, and others will be happy to try and answer. Thank you. Thank you.